Yesterday's discoveries are today's advances and tomorrow's cure. And this is the research mantra. And this mantra specially holds good in the case of cancer research. That's the importance of basic research in the case of cancer, right? So today we're going to see career and scope in cancer research for biotech students. I'm Dr. Vaishali, academic specialist at Biotechnica. Biotechnica is a space where we guide you on anything and everything regarding your bioscience career. Come, let's explore the topic. This video is sponsored by Biotechnica. Biotechnica is the world's largest platform of bioscientists. You can know more about Biotechnica from this particular website that is www.biotechnica.org. There are a lot of workshops coming up, almost one every two weeks. So you can see this, uh, you know, you can go to this particular link to see what are the different workshops that's coming up and what is good for you and what you want to take up. The next is about an internship, which is called the All-in-One R&D Internship, which has been announced recently. Do go and check out the link. And it starts from the 27th of December. You can dial this number or you can drop an email to info at biotechnica.org to know further about this internship. We also have the Drona Batch for, for CSIR net preparation. If you are a CSIR net aspirant, then there's the Drona batch waiting for you. You can pay as low as just rupees 4,000 per month and you can avail a one year subscription. And along with the subscription, you can also have all the workshops you get for free as well as one internship absolutely for free with this particular batch. You can call onto this number or you can drop an email to info at biotechnica.org for knowing more about the Drona batch for CSIR Net. Now, let's jump on to our topic, right? So what is cancer research, right? So cancer re research is done to develop safe and effective method, particularly to prevent, to prevent, to detect, to diagnose, treat, as well as cure cancer, right? So these individual steps are very important and it's a collective measure of all of these uh, that happens in cancer research or for the cure of cancer altogether. The study of cancer is also called as oncology. Now, why is cancer research important, right? So first of all, it's the leading cause of death worldwide, right? So that is how a red alert disease cancer is. So there are around 10 million deaths just in 2020 because of cancer and nearly one in six death is because of cancer. So one person, so among six deaths that, that happens worldwide, the one among them is because of cancer, right? So the most common types of cancers are breast cancer, lung cancer, colon, rectum, and prostate cancer, right? Many cancers can be cured if detected early. So early detection is something that's very important and effective treatment follows the early detection. So early detection and effective treatment is possible only because of cancer research, only when there is research, when there's basic information about cancer, can you go ahead with the cure itself, isn't it? So the better understanding of these diseases is very, very important. Better understanding in the terms of the onset of cancer, the growth of cancer, as well as the spread of cancer in the body. So all of these information is very much necessary and that information you get only through research, that is cancer research, and that's how much important it is in the world today. So targeted treatment and prevention strategies can be formed only when this basic research is in place. Now, how does cancer research work or what do we, or 
what we call as cancer research cycle, right? So how does that happen? First of all, it happens with observation with medical relevance. So you first start observing the patients, that is there is a medical relevance to it. You start observing the patients about what is it that has happened to them. And then you go ahead with the discovery, the discovery of maybe it could be some gene or it could be mutation or it could even be protein alteration or anything of that sort. So what is it that has caused cancer, right? So that is what you're going to discover. And once that discovery is done, then you go ahead with therapeutic development. That is a, a therapeutic uh, drug or any other medication for that matter that can help in treating cancer. So that research will be done. And once that research is done, it's, it'll of course go for proof, uh, you know, the proof of concept that's nothing but clinical testing, right? So this can involve either animal model testing or even human, uh, you know, clinical trials. So all of those testing will be done in the case of research in clinical testing. And once the clinical testing is done, and if we see that the results are practice changing, that is, there is a difference, there is a cure that has happened in the case of clinical trials, then you go ahead with clinical practice. Clinical practice is nothing but the drug is out in the market and it is available for patients to use it to cure them from disease or from cancer. So that is what clinical practice is is and once it gets into clinical practice, it doesn't stop there, right? There's also a risk assessment test and the clinical, uh, you know, trial phase four, where, where it is after post-market studies is done, where you do risk assessment and, uh, you know, uh, all of those testing in the phase four uh, clinical trial. So that is done here and you get learnings from this healthcare system as well. And again, the cycle repeats that as you go for observation and then discovery therapeutic clinic. So all of this cycle keeps repeating. If at all this clinical testing fails, right? If it's not practice changing, then again, you go back to observation, you see why it did not work. And then you go again for discovery and therapeutic development, right? So it is nothing but a big cycle. The cancer research is a big cycle and this is how it happens. Now, what are the categories of cancer research? So, right, so we have four different categories. The first is the basic research, that is what we saw in the previous, um, you know, slide as well, that is the discovery, the medical observation and the discovery as to, you know, what is the cellular, cellular and molecular level. So what are the changes that happens at these levels, cellular and molecular levels? So that is studied in the basic research, right? So once the basic research is done, then it goes ahead with translational research. That is what we call from lab to the bed, right? So what you have, whatever basic research has done, how can you translate it into a cure, right? So this is nothing but a therapeutic development a therapeutic solution that you can come up based on the basic research that we have done. And once you come up with a therapeutic solution, then comes clinical research. Now, what is clinical research? Clinical research is nothing but the clinical trials that you go ahead with your therapeutic drug that is on the animals or on the humans that you undergo. And this clinical, uh, you know, trials comes in four different phases, right? The first, uh, the phase one is nothing but a preclinical trial. Phase two is a animal model. Phase three is um, the phase one is preclinical trial or animal model testing. Phase two is a small human population testing. Phase three is a huge uh, higher, uh, you know, population testing. And phase four is nothing but the post-market testing, right? So these are the four different uh, clinical trials, phases of clinical trials. The last type of research is nothing but the population research, which is also otherwise 
termed as the clinical trial for testing. That is where after it is released into the market, there is an assessment about the risk that is done. And this research is called the population research. So these are the four uh, you know, basic research that happens in the case of cancer research. Now, we have seen what cancer research is, what are, why is it important and how is it done and what are the different categories of cancer research. Now we are going to see what are the core career opportunities in cancer research. That is, the first is nothing but the data scientist. The second is a research assistant where you'll be involved in pure research in the lab. The third is a clinical researcher that is, we already saw that we have, uh, you know, we need to do a lot of clinical trials for clinical research to happen. So you would be involved in the as a clinical researcher, which will be associated with hospitals or clinic, right? Yeah. Next is a biostatistician. So you have, you would have collected n number of results, results and n number of data points uh, with the research that you have done, especially in the clinical trials, right? Now, how do you analyze all of those data? You can be a biostatistician where you can analyze those data and then come up with, uh, you know, good inferences which can help in translating that particular research into a good cure, right? So that is what a biostatistician would be doing. The next is the epidemiologist who would be reading the disease side of uh, cancer. The next is a medical oncologist. To be an epidemiologist and medical oncologist, it's mostly the, you know, people who have the medicine background, they can, you know, very well be uh, these researchers, that is epidemiologist and a medical oncologist. Next, what we're going to talk about is a non-core area of or non-core careers in cancer research that is, you know, non-research associated, you know, cancer careers, right? The first is, of course, the scientific publishing. So if you're good at writing, or if you're good at editing, then you can become a scientific publisher or you can be involved in scientific publishing in the case of cancer research. Second is patent law. So Patent is nothing but it's an uh, intellectual property. So many companies, uh, you know, come up with their discoveries, their inventions, not discoveries, their inventions, and they want to protect their inventions. And that is possible through patents, right? They apply for patents and they get patents, uh, you know, um, intellectual property right for them. So all of these companies need people with technical background as well as law background who can help them get these patents, dra draft the patent and get the patent as well. So you can be, uh, you know, working with a law firm or even companies if you are entering into the patent law. Next is, of course, teaching. So teaching and research can go hand in hand. So if you are good at teaching or if teaching is your passion, then you can also enter the teaching side of cancer uh, you know, biology. Next is science journalism. So you can see, you can work with the current events that's happening in science or even in research, uh, even in cancer research in particular, and you can be a journalist. Next is policy maker. So here you'll be involved with the government and also non-government entities, uh, you know, who are involved in making the policy around the cancer or around cancer research as well. Next is, of course, the administration and management in science. So this could uh, be even, um, you know, in a company, if you're going for the management position in a biotech company or a cancer research oriented company. So you can go into the management or the administration level as well. So these are the non-core careers that's available for you if you're doing cancer research. With this, I come to the end of this particular discussion. I'm sure it was super helpful for everybody out there who wants to focus in cancer research. Are there any more opportunities? Are there any more questions that you have? Please let us know in the comment section below. We are happy to have a discussion with you. Thank you so much and see you all until next video.